started with Coach Shenander. Um, first question will be uh, Sam Kewen, World Herald. Eric, uh, congrats on having all those players come back. That's really cool. Uh, it's certainly a testament to what you guys are doing on that side of the ball. Uh, my, my question is about some of those players. Um, they're all very experienced. How do you keep them hungry? How do you keep developing those guys in the spring, even though they already know so much? Yeah, uh, well, thanks, uh, Sam. I thought you were going to ask who got the black shirts already. You, that question hasn't come yet. Um, no, it, it – it's a good, uh, good, good question. Uh, you know, I think that's kind of a the balancing act of getting, uh, you know, a lot of young guys that need reps, um, along with some of those older guys. You know, they, you know, we had a long, a long season time wise last year, but you know, short from the amount of games we played and the amount of reps everybody probably got. So those guys need reps um, as well. They need to sharpen their craft, and um, you know, they're really going to be working on their leadership uh, this this spring, and and hopefully, you know, we have. You know, we got six of those guys back, so hopefully we have, you know, six extra coaches um, around during practice. They're they're very versed in what we're trying to do. Uh, they understand the drills and what we want to get done. Uh, so I'm asking those guys to kind of take dual roles of not only making themselves the best player they can be, sharpening their craft, but also helping us get everybody else um, where we need to go, just a, a few more sets of eyes and, and, uh, and ears out there. But, uh, you know, I'm really, I'm really pleased with those guys coming back. I think they're going to be uh, very instrumental to what we're trying to do. And um, I'm just really happy when they all, when they all said they were coming back. Thanks. Yeah, Eric, I guess a similar line of question, but with the number of guys who you have just in the program that are essentially going through spring for the first time, um, I guess, A, how much will that veteran group need to help pull that group along? And then um, how interested are you to see? I mean, when you're game planning, I'm guessing that you don't get a lot of time with Blaze Gunnarsson or Jamari Butler or someone like that when you're in the middle of November and, and trying to prepare for a game. Yeah, yeah. Um... You know, I, I love spring football um, because I think it's a, it's a great opportunity to to work with guys like you mentioned, um, Blaze and Jamari, and a, a lot of other uh, you know newer faces, guys that might have been here last year and redshirted and or were injured or didn't get a lot of reps. Uh, so I, I love spring football, being able to work with those guys and just watching those guys get better every day. Uh, sometimes, like like you mentioned, you know, when you're in the middle of the season and you're game planning for an opponent and you're, you know, getting the, the first one or two groups ready, uh, sometimes there's not a, a ton of time that can be spent with those, those younger guys. But we all know that those younger guys are going to be um, – you know, they're, they're the, the foundation on, on what we've got to build for the future. So it's great in spring ball to be able to get hands on with those guys and really watch them get meaningful reps and, and play alongside, you know, the ones and the twos as we interject those guys in the lineup. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, really excited about working with that, that young group of guys we have. Another one in that group uh, is, is Javen Wright. And I know there's been some talk about he could play different things. Do you have a plan? with him this spring about where he slots in or would you like to see him in multiple positions over the next five weeks? Yeah, he's going to play uh, multiple positions because I think he's going to have to be ready to uh, play some multiple positions during the season. You know, he's going to get in there with, uh, you know, take some reps, uh, you know, from JoJo at that spot, at that at that Sam Nickel spot, and also have to play some uh, safety as well. Um, Isaac Gifford's going to do the same thing, but um, we're trying to get, get guys you know ready to play uh wherever they can help us and we're, we just need to get the, the all the best guys on the field uh, plus i think you know you guys had it well documented that jojo played a, a lot of reps last year for us um uh, you know i don't know in a in a 12 game season how many guys can can play every single rep of every single game so um you know, as well as Deontay and Markel. Uh, so being able to get some guys that can that can rotate in there and, and, and give those guys a few breaks throughout a, a long uh, regular season, Big Ten plus non-conference, I think is going to be important to develop that depth. Mitch Sherman, The Athletic. Hey, Eric, um, Scott mentioned that uh, Mike Dawson is going to be uh, kind of leading the charge with special teams. You guys have obviously done that. Um, having an on-field coach, position coach, also be in charge of special teams in the past. What, if anything, do you take from that experience in supporting him or, you know, doing it the same, doing it different to, to make sure your special teams are as good as they can be? Yeah, I think, um, 
no matter who, who the special teams coach is, um, you know, it, it's the, the job of all the assistants and, and you know, when, when it's the defense and then, you know, goes out on the field to practice and I'm coordinating and everybody else is, um, you know, helping, helping do, do whatever they can to make the defense the best. That's the same thing, that's the same thing I need to do when, when Mike's out there coordinating the special teams. It's, you know, my job to be an assistant in that phase and do anything I can to help out special teams. Uh, Mike's done a good job um, everywhere we've ever been. He's been a special teams coordinator before, uh, has a lot of experience with that, so I know he'll, he'll do a great job there. And uh, I'm just looking forward to uh, coaching in that phase of the football uh, game you know, whatever he needs me to do. And I'm sure he'll, he'll give me uh, roles on, on all four of those special teams, whether it be a, a very little task or a very big task. But uh, we all know that, you know, as good as special teams can be that makes offense and defense better. Uh, I think that, you know, the, the younger guys on defense need to find their way onto special teams. Um, so I, I, I think it's great for, for myself and all the other guys to be able to, to help him uh, coach all, all, all four phases in the special teams. Hey, Eric, I know you're just getting to know him, but how useful is it to add a guy like Chris Kalarovich with his, you know, call, uh, an actual college resume with what he did at Northern Iowa? Yeah, he, he's been a great addition so far. Um, you know, like you said, we've, we've had meetings and, and things of those natures, but uh, we haven't had that much time uh, with, with all the young guys yet. But, uh, you know, just getting a guy in there that's played a lot of football, uh, a lot of quality football. I, I was part of that league for a long time. Um, you know, there, there's there's extremely good football players in that league, extremely good football teams, and, and really good coaching. Um, I, I know from you know the coaches that had him, his his uh, position coach and the defensive coordinator. Uh, I'm friends with those guys, so I, I know what kind of player he is and what they've done with him in the past. Uh, he's a guy that you know you don't have to really teach necessarily the game of football it's kind of learning a new language uh you know he he knows all the all all the you know the concepts and everything that's gonna that's happening it's just learning a new set of language uh, as he moves from from you and i's defense to to our defense um but but it's been great he's been like a it's been like a veteran like getting a free agent in the nfl um and i think that he's gonna have a a huge impact on the football team are him and nick henrich are they guys who can be chess pieces you move around the linebacker spots outside inside or is he in that same mold or how do you feel about that yeah I think you know for, for right now with him I you know Nick definitely Nick's Nick's shown that he can do it um Nick's a football guy I've said it before and he can he can pick it up and play uh, different spots if you need him to um and Nick's got some length Chris right now is going to be playing inside linebacker for us and we'll, we'll see in the future if we if we move him around some but uh, like I said I mean he's a he's a really good football player that that knows and understands football so I wouldn't be out of the the, the you know the realm of imagination to think that he can move and, and play some different spots as well thank you thank you Derek Peterson Hale Varsity Hey, I was asking Coach Frost and, and Coach Lubick about just kind of culture within the team. And, and one thing that they both said was that it, it has to really be player led. Um, have, have you guys seen any specific guys that, that have really sort of stepped up into that role that maybe they haven't been in the past? I mean, like you had, you had Colin Miller and, and DiCaprio Boodle who've moved on. Have there been other guys that have kind of taken those spots? Yeah, I think, you know, when, when, when the group of guys decided they wanted to come back, uh, you know, along with with Cam Taylor deciding that he wanted to return for another year, I think when those guys that that group was it was an interesting group. Uh, you know, when they were making all their decisions, they kind of I, I know they all had to do each thing individually for the, what was best for themselves, but I know they all got together and kind of talked about their goals and what they wanted to get done. And if they're going to come back, they'd like to do it together. So um, that group has kind of banded together and, and stepped up in that leadership role. We'll see once once spring football gets here if some individual voices emerge. But right now, that kind of, that group of those guys that have come back has just been kind of the driving force, um, you know, especially on, on the defensive side of the football. Cam's a guy. He was he was behind Lamar Jackson and and DiCaprio his first year, and then he was with DiCaprio next year. With DiCaprio kind of moving on, does it feel like he maybe has? Do you get the sense that that he sees like a, a platform for himself to to sort of be that guy in the DB room? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, definitely, especially at the corner spot, and I think he's taking it upon himself to to help that that next group of corners come up. Um, obviously, like you said, DiCaprio's gone now, uh, so somebody's got to got to take that 
take that other corner job, and we, we need some guys to rotate in and some guys to be able to play in nickel and dime packages. Uh, but Cam's taking it upon himself to kind of lead lead that uh, – you know, that, that corner position. And then, you know, Deontay and Markell have come back to lead that safety position. So I think in that, in the back end, um, there's some, there's some good leadership there and there's some, there's some, a lot of good talent there. I think two more for coach, uh, Sean Callahan. Hey coach, follow up on that corner question. Um, you know, how do you kind of size that race up right now? I mean, who will be the guys that you really work with the first groups um, when you guys start practice this week in terms of replacing Boodle at that open corner spot? Yeah, um, you know, Sean, I want to see a bunch of different guys play, and I want to see a bunch of different um, combinations together. Um, there's just a, a, a lot of guys that uh, are out there that have had some good reps, um, some guys that, you know, we really have to find out who, who can step in there and be that guy. Obviously, you know, names like Quentin Newsom and Braxton Clark and the Dab Joseph and Taman Lynham. Uh, you have a, a lot of a lot of guys that can that can do a lot of nice things, um, but. As we all know, um, you know we can talk however much we want. We can say what we want, but the beautiful thing about this game is when the lights turn on, we're going to find out. Uh, and the only way we're going to find out is to let those guys have opportunities with the the ones and the twos and to play against um, you know the really really good competition on the other side of the football. And so hopefully by spring football it'll shake itself out. Uh, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's pretty even going into spring football, and then you need fall camp. Um, but it'll 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 work itself out. And I know we I know this. You have to have more than two corners, especially going through a full a full season. Um, you know, last year I think you know. We all got away with everybody in the country probably got away with playing guys a little bit more than they they probably could because of the the shortened season. Uh, but you know, to be a really good football team, you have to have depth, especially at that corner position. You need to be able to roll in three or four guys every game and make sure everybody's fresh. You know, as much as also as, as much as you know, Cam's going to be in the return game, and some of those corners are going to be playing uh, Gunner and Jammer on special teams. So you, you, we have to have good good depth there, and hopefully by uh, by the time spring ball's over, it'll shake out a little bit. Yeah, when you have a spread team on the schedule like Oklahoma early on, how important is it that you figure out who those guys are? Because you're probably going to need more than, as you said, two corners early on the season. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, you're you're going to have to. Um, not only we have to find out who those guys are, but we're going to have to develop in enough where you know they're going to have to play right away. As you said, there may be more than maybe more than two on the field, um, or you know you're playing against a, a really good Oklahoma football team that's it's, it's pretty uh, powerful on offense, and they're going to be in spread situations. There, there may be you know a, a good rotation going on there. Uh, so I think we're going to have to you know identify those guys through spring and then really get them a lot of reps in fall camp, and we're going to have to play them early so that they're ready for a game like that. Uh, just going big picture, Eric, um, you got all these guys back. We've talked about it. How you're, you're, I'm, I'm sure you're expecting improvement, but how much improvement should we expect? What's, what's realistic for this defense? Oh, I don't know, except that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, you, you get into spring football and, you know, we, we talked about it at length a little bit today with the guys and, um, you know, improvement, you know, first off, you have to improve every day, every single guy on the team, every coach has to improve a little bit every day, uh, you know, and, and big things add up to little things. So if you, if you get a little better every day and at the end of the spring and at the end of the fall camp, then, then you can chip away at some, some, you know, some big improvement. But, you know, if you, if you look at, Kind of what we we had going on last year, um, the missed tackles, you know, were down from whatever I had it on a piece of paper this morning, eleven something down to eight something per game. If you can get that down um, a little lower, and you can uh, hold teams, I think we were giving up about five explosives a year last year, or excuse me, a game last year. Um, if you can get that down another couple, and then if you can um, find a way to create two or more turnovers a game, you know, those are the improvements. And then then you're talking about what what seems like a, a you know a little thing that we're talking about turns out to be a huge thing when you're talking about where you're ranked in defense and the amount of points you give up and ultimately the amount of wins you get so i think you you always have to you know you can expect a lot of improvement but you have to put it in front of the guys in in you know obtainable situations and if you can break it down as small as you can um 
and try to accomplish those goals, then then a lot of improvement is you know is is very very reachable. So you know I'm 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 looking at the little things first. I'm looking through the microscope, and then hopefully that that uh, grows into something huge throughout the season. Um, one other thing, you can't have Oklahoma in the front of your mind, but can you have Oklahoma in the back of your mind a little bit? That offense. Yeah, I think you know to, for me right now. Um, as we were kind of going through and, you, you know, you're looking at everybody a little bit as the season gets over, kind of the natural progression is, you know, as a staff, we're looking at, at our film. Um, and then you're kind of looking at, uh, you know, your most familiar opponents, your, your Big Ten West uh, counterparts. Uh, spring football, I won't, I won't spend very much time looking at opponents because um, I, I need to dedicate this, this month or this month and a half to, to our guys. You know, our guys are what really matters. Um, but then, but then, as we get out of this spring ball phase, um, especially with you know, we won't be able to go out recruiting like we normally do. That's that's when we'll take a peek at uh, you know our, our, our opponents, and um, you know you kind of want to do it backwards a little bit, if you will, because um, if you do it backwards, then the the team you play first, Illinois, they'll be freshest in your mind when you when you go into uh, the summer season. Um, but we'll we'll definitely we'll definitely. Uh, be diving in. And I know that's a, that's a game that the guys are fired up for. Um, you know, they, they talked about, you know, wanting to be able to compete with, with a team like Oklahoma. So uh, I think in the, in the next, after about a month and spring balls, finally all the dust is settled, that's when we'll get a chance to take a look at Oklahoma. But um, obviously with the team as good as they are on the schedule, you, you, you got to think about it a little bit and you got to start getting ready for them. Thank you.